Games, Brains Ahead, Banging Live Fear. Carl and Brendan, happy Halloween. 13 days of Halloween. We thought we'd do a special 10 things we love and 10 things we hate. Obviously, two separate videos. We are now starting with the love. And it is 10 things we love about heavy metal and rock and horror. The combination of the two, be it heavy, and metal, heavy metal and rock in movies, the horror movies, or vice versa. Horror movies that have that, that vibe or uh look feel I don't, I don't know however you want to call it there are some there are a few because I, I know a few but uh yeah so there's it, it seemed like a great idea at the time and i was like yeah, yeah this is a great idea perfect for halloween you can tell how difficult it was to complete these lists just by how difficult it was for you to explain that yes. what these videos are going to be about yeah because all you end up going getting stuck in is fucking cameos oh alice cooper was in this film or Corey taylor was in this film it's like none of that is what useful yeah, I got. I mean, my my thing. I wasn't even on the cameo so much. I was getting stuck on, um, like I don't know. I'd remember a film, and mm. I'd remember a song that I think was a part of the soundtrack of the film, and then I'd look it up and I'd go, "Well, it it wasn't officially like you know what I mean. It was like a thing that was done like on Kerrang after. Oh, <laughs> you know. I was like, oh fuck. Or or I'd be like, oh, I've got all these cool heavy metal things, and I'm like, they're all comedies. Oh uh, shit. Uh, <laughs> that's it. But there you go. So we're gonna give it a good old go. Uh, with 10 things we love um, and you might as well get started then okay I did all I did better I think on the 10 things we love than than on the hate which okay. is not a bad thing so go heavy metal and horror hmm. um, so no particular order or anything like that but let's go for let's start serious-ish um, I guess really on the horror side of things and as mm -hmm. much as um, we would obviously when we when we talk about heavy metal you know we pretty much everybody credits Black Sabbath as being the origins of heavy metal or metal as we know today obviously there's always guitar driven rock and everything like that beforehand yeah uh but then i guess you can also kind of tie that into the horror in that black sabbath himself credit mario barber's her horror anthology from 1963 of the same name black sabbath black to see sabbath, why yeah. they named themselves black sabbath and how they why they started trying to introduce darker you know themes into their music and obviously changing the name from the polka talk blues band to Black Sabbath was quite impactful because I'm not sure they would have had the same, um, <laughs> you know, I impact. A, I remember that from a quiz question. Yeah, that was now. from a quiz, wasn't it? Yeah. But yeah, so Black Sabbath was born, Heavy Metal was born, but I guess in part thanks to Mario Bava and his horror anthology, which inspired Black Sabbath to go on and be darker. So there's your ultimate first connection. That's <laughs> um, that's a really good start. Mine is first. Oh, it gets worse. Lazy. <laughs> So one's really simple. It's uh, and it's not like a, co it's not an uncommon thing where rock and metal gets on the soundtrack of a horror movie. You'll often find it all over the place. However, when I think of that, I think actually of two specific horror movies which don't just have rock and metal on the sort of soundtrack. You know, like playing in the outro or over the credits where you often find it. They'll, that are throughout the movie during important scenes and stuff like that. And the two that jump to mind for me, right, is 1985's Demons, which has Motley Crue. Billy Idol, except Saxon, all throughout that entire movie. And of course, 1985 is The Return of the Living Dead, which has TSOL, The Dam, SSQ, The Cramps, and the likes of all of that, making up the entire, almost the entire soundtrack beyond the original motion picture stuff. Enough yeah. that you can get records, LPs, and so on. I have The Return of the Living Dead on my shelf behind me. So that, that that's my first one, yeah. There we go. Mm. We're doing all right so far. Yay. Uh, okay, so Marilyn Manson. Uh, uh, I this, this is, have him. Well, this is more specific, actually, and I guess this is where the horror ties in, uh, more to do with the band member names mm -hmm. than the, um, the Marilyn Manson or the shock aspect or anything like that itself. Yeah. And I just really like this, like, you know, the idea that they had this concept of the light and dark, you know, the, the beauty of America mixed with the sort of ruthless killer, serial killer to form band member stage name. So they obviously Marilyn Manson being Marilyn Monroe and Charles Manson yeah. combined. And then obviously it carried on for everybody. So, you know, you're Twiggy Ramirez, Ginger Fish, yeah, I'm just looking um, at them, Daisy Berkowitz, Madonna, Wayne Gacy, Olivia oh, Newton Bundy, which is a great one. Um, you know, and pretty much all of the way through, I think there were a few like anomalies in it where, where it didn't really go that way. But for the most part, you know, I guess there's probably little less horror mm. than actual real life uh, serial killers you know and i i, I kind of like the way that manson incorporated that horror element into the band which isn't even in the music 
and it's probably not necessarily even known by a i don't know a person who's heard the beautiful people once yeah but actually in the background of the band names a lot more thought and creativity went into it yeah i've just that true life horror and metal yeah i've just i've been looking i was googling and trying to find um some of the original former members names and ones that you less know and you're right right so zaza speck yeah, so who did keyboards in 1990 you said olivia newton bundy gidget 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 gein as in ed gein yeah uh sarah lee lucas george lucas <laughs> Murder in Star Wars movies. <laughs> da- Daisy Berkowitz, you said. Yeah. Zimzum. Yeah, like, I'm not. I'm no true crime expert, like by any means whatsoever. Do you know what I mean? I know. I recognise like a fair few of the, you know, the the, the famous ones, like obviously yeah. Donna Wayne Gacy and people like that. Daisy Berkowitz, but um. John Five. Ginger Fish. Ginger Fish. That was Ginger Rogers, and I can't remember the guy's name. I do remember. The, Mr. Fish. <laughs> and Twiggy Ramirez. Yeah, these are some of the bigger names. When you mention like Madonna Wayne Gacy and Twiggy Ramirez, it triggers that memory. I don't know if you've ever seen it. It's a, a talk show Manson did back in the 90s of like some conservative Maury style talk show. And they're on that. And like the first thing as a host is like, oh, your name's Madonna Wayne Gacy. And like, you know, and the crowd's yeah. like, ooh, and all that, you know. <laughs> That's cool. it. That's the shit parents were scared of, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's so stupid as well when you think about it. It's but like- it is, yeah, because like, what they've done actually is such, it's so clever because they're not naming themselves after a serial killer. No one's come out there and just said, hey, my name's John Wayne Casey. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Or Charles Manson. What they're doing <laughs> is literally, obviously, trying to show the two sides to every yeah. country, person, group of people, whatever. You know, there's dark and light in everybody. And how both, in particularly the case of Marilyn Manson, how both were like worshipped in a way by Americana, Marilyn yeah. Monroe and Charles Manson. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, my next one's simple, and it's one specific person. Uh, a band and, and as such, but we don't think of the band, we think of the man. And it is the man who has made a career out of horror. Not just his music, but his stage show, his persona, and all of that. It is, of course, Alice Cooper. And it's one thing I love is that Alice Cooper has made a career out of shock rock horror, light elements, cheesiness, and silliness to the point where it is, when you think of, horror in rock and heavy metal alice cooper is probably a name that even the layman outside would know yeah yeah i've seen him i've seen his shit on stage i've seen him you know fake hang himself guillotine all that stuff so yeah cool stuff yeah he is an icon yeah that's it right what should we go for uh so i'm I'm gonna just drop a i think i think i've only got one of these i know i've got two uh or i've got three just uh drop a film yeah, that I actually think combines uh, metal and horror, although it's comedy horror um, perfectly, and that is Deathgasm. Oh, I knew I was wondering <laughs> if either of us would. Ch- I didn't take Deathgasm, but I yeah, knew, yeah. I, I, I think it's a great film. You know, it's, it's obviously got that over over the top kind of gore, mm-hmm. you know, element to it, which is great. Loads of you know buckets of blood everywhere and all that, but it kind of manages to do all the little cliches around metal without being insulting whatsoever um which is sometimes hard to do you know normally it just seems like everyone's taking a piss but i think because this was like directed and put together by a fan uh you know a director who's actually a fan of metal you know it's got great soundtracks got emperor esau and stuff like that you know rather than just being your, your box standard hey, i've got a soundtrack and it's lincoln park and disturbed or whatever um <laughs> You know, and it also like did some cool things. Like I know that uh, when they released the official soundtrack, for example, they had a couple of those big hitters. Like it had two Emperor songs in there and a few bits like that, and an and Isan song. But it also then put like a load of like under or or lesser known kind of bands alongside it. So the CD would still sell because of the Emperor name, but it would also give people the opportunity to hear bands like a uh, Elm Street, Skullfist, and Beast Wars. Cool. You know, who also cool. got the feature on it. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah, you know, like the fact that Giza that produced and directed, I don't know his name, I should have looked it up, but I'm shit at researching. Mm. <laughs> but, um, you know, he was enough of a fan of metal that he, he even saw a way here to kind of plug the underground a little bit. But, you know, but it's a good film, man. It was uh, written and directed by Jason, Jason Lee Howden, his directorial debut as well. There you go. Yep, yep. Somebody, yeah. somebody does their research. It's certainly one of the better ones where if you're going to talk about a themed horror movie that has heavy metal in it, the very good ones are very few and far between. I've seen some wank over the years. Uh, yep. Like Death Metal Zombie, uh, Trick or Treat, the one with Ozzy and all that in it, which I fucking hated. The 1987 movie, is it? Um, yeah, late 80s anyway, yeah. Yeah, so Deathgasm is a nice surprise, even though I wouldn't exactly call it a classic. 
no, it's not a classic. It's too it's too new to be a classic, though, isn't it? It's only a few years old, but it's just a decent crack at it. Yeah, you know. Yeah, and it's no easy task. Well, I'm going to do my movie then. I've got one as well. Uh, that's specifically a movie. Now, this movie itself isn't actually like a metal movie in the sense it's it's a musical and it's very camp musical movie. However, its villain is a heavy metal part of it. He plays a guitar and riffs and uses it as a weapon. And when he's killing at the end, he's actually playing his guitar at the same time. And it's a heavy metal soundtrack to his music. So it's like when he's on scene, the music's heavy metal, but elsewhere it's all like over the top songs. And it also stars Meatloaf, which is credibility alone. It's called Stage Fright. It, it's, it's not a remake of Stage Fright from the 1980s, but it is in that family, if that makes sense. It's like a loose, loosely based on Stage Fright from the 1980s, except it's 2014. It's a, very, it's a comedy horror. It's got some great songs. Uh, I love the movie. I love it, I love it, I love it. And as soon as I saw Meatloaf was in it, I was like, yes, if he gets <laughs> to sing even better. But once you meet the villain who's like, you know, wears a mask, he's dressed like a Japanese villain. I can't remember what they're called, a uh, style of ghost. And the first time you see him pull out the guitar and start singing in about how he's going to kill someone, you're just like, yep, yeah, I'm all on board with this. So Stage Fright 2014, that to me is one of my favorites when I think of metal related horror. Yeah. I don't know if it sounds brilliant or terrifying. The minute you look like you say musical at the beginning, I was, I instantly my back goes up and like, oh, musical. It's, I think <laughs> it's brilliant I, I, because the songs are very funny as well. Um, yeah. Okay. Let's go for Zombie Land's opening credits. Oh, <laughs> now, very good. The film is fine as comical zombie movies go, you know. Don't think either film is brilliant. Yep. But also don't think they're the worst things that ever happened to, to zombie flicks either, you know. So. Agreed. Um, but the, t- the two things that can't be denied in that film is basically the intro to each film. Mm. Um, you know, the intro to the first film is For Whom the Bell Tolls. And then it kind of timed to the music, you know, we have the kind of apocalypse going off and people getting bitten and eaten and all that sort of stuff yeah. with their over the top kind of comic action. Uh, and then the second one, it's the same sort of thing, but to Master of Puppets. I've not know. seen the second one. It, I didn't know that. So Master yeah. Puppets is the... It's, it's like their thing. Metallica song, intro. It starts off with the gang, you know, Tallahassee and all that this time. Yeah. Whereas the first one, it's just like the apocalypse going off. Yeah. And this one, it's the, the, the kind of group walking towards the White House because they're going to camp out there. And there's a big field of zombies in front of them. So then as they start going at them, it's all done to the beat of Master of Puppets. Nice. I like and even, that. You know, just... Honestly, like the film, the film you can take it or leave it, but it's, it, the first three minutes are worth watching, <laughs> and then you can do what you like after. Yeah, I remember I saw the original Zombie Land in the cinema, and I didn't know anything about it at the time. Zombie film was cool. We were sitting there, and it kicked into that opening of Who Filmed in the Bell Towers. I remember mm. being with my wife and being like, Oh my, oh, oh, like that's it. So, yeah. happy days, you know, <laughs> intrigue is up, and it's kind of like you know, that, that that puts you straight up there, doesn't it? At like a good seven or eight out of ten. So, the worst that can happen is you're going to drop down a few points. That's it, but, yeah, exactly. You, know, that. you started off at a high, so there we go, good on you, yeah. but yeah, so yeah, there you go, horror and heavy metal, awesome. <laughs> Right, my next one is sticking to films, but I'm going to talk about one man in particular who is predominantly known for his music and now as much known for his film work as anything. Now, I am going to... This guy is on the hate list as well for other reasons, but he is on the love list because of his early work. So the idea of a rock and metal um, singer, performer, and so on entering the world of horror was always quite intriguing. I don't think anybody could have expected how good his early stuff was House of a Thousand Corpses and The Devil's Rejects. I'm of course talking about Rob Zombie. Mm-hmm. Uh, and those early movies where you got that mix of, oh, we're getting this guy who always had this feel of horror about him as well from his music, be it as Rob Zombie or White Zombie, and then entering into the world of horror. It felt like, oh yes, look at these worlds colliding. And he yeah. rightfully gained the respect and love for those early movies. We, an important word I'm saying there, early movies, because we will get to the other side of it later in the other video. But for that, that connection, yeah, absolutely. Well, I think yeah. Rob Zombie might be our biggest star <clears throat> in the horror world. Yeah, no, absolutely. I agree 100%. Yeah. Um, and it's also one of the reasons why he features on my hate list. <laughs> but we'll, we'll get to that. Yeah. Uh, so I'm going to go for another film here now. And, and, and you could 
and I wouldn't even debate it to be honest with you, but you could easily argue that this is not, neither a horror film or a metal film. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> but I kind of think of it as like it's about as metal as a film can be without being a metal film. All right. Uh, and that is The Crow. Oh, I see what you're getting at here. Yes. You know, it's dark, it's seedy and that, but you could, you know, you could easily argue it's not a horror anyway, or it's not a straight up horror. It has horror elements. I, w- I would yeah. put it in the thriller category more than horror, but I, I, I know we've, we've, in the metal community, we've adopted this movie. Yeah, absolutely. That's what it is. It's our little, our little uh, Somalian baby. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I do love the film. I've always been a huge fan of the film. You know, it's dark and grimy and I don't know, really, really liked it. But, um, you know, it does have some other good things going for a metal. Why it's got a sound, good soundtrack, uh, which was all done with like different bands covering things like Pantera cover the badge on it, Nine Inch Nails, Cure, Rage Against Machine, Roland's Band, uh, Stark, it's doomy, it's depressive, cool as fuck. And uh, it has, happens to have a guy that pretty much seems to have inspired Johannes from Avatar, you know, as, as a front man at a later date. So go the crow. Yeah, I would say it's... Uh, it- um what's call his name uh i've got his name brandon brandon lee, lee yeah brandon lee he's a he's a he's a goth icon a goth mm. icon yeah Girls wanted yeah to sleep with him boys wanted to be him yeah you know a few boys converted to probably wanting to sleep with him i'd imagine <laughs> I, you know i've seen that movie loads i haven't seen i haven't seen it in probably a decade it might be no, I, to watch you know i haven't either i was, I was actually it's weird because while writing this and i was sort of thinking about it it's one of those things where i i'm pretty sure i've seen it like you know maybe like upwards of 10 times in total and then as soon as i was writing this I, there was like no back no ill feeling to it i was kind of like oh i wouldn't mind watching it again do you know what i mean i was actually thinking oh i might watch that again soon i haven't yeah, seen yeah, that yeah. for a long time you know it's a, it's a good film i think it is a true classic yeah it'd be interesting to see how well it holds up as well with your modern reviewer mind yeah yeah i do think like it's it, sometimes these films that are shot in the way that they are which is it's always dark it's always grainy and it's always raining and mm. Seven. You know, that sort of thing. It kind of it kind of helps, doesn't it? Because it doesn't seem to age as badly over time. Yeah. It just remains dark and grainy. It does. Yes. You know? that's, that's seven look where it's <clears throat> yeah. rainy and grim. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I will not do my other film. Then. I'm going to jump to sticking with movies and it's now cameos. So heavy metal and rock stars getting cameos in movies are ten a penny. In horror, as much as anything else as well. Although you end up going down, a, you start Googling and you go down a fucking rabbit hole of random stuff that makes <laughs> no sense. Some of it, not even necessarily to us, like, you know, I'm like, okay, let me look at someone. It's like, here's David Barry and Zuland. And it's like, that's not really what I'm looking for. But yeah, I know. But I started thinking, I, I ended up dropping the Google thing and thinking of ones in my own head. Just a couple. I was like, think of what jumps out on you. And, the, uh, and I focused on the cameos that you make you go, oh, 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 I didn't expect to see you there. And it's weird. One happened quite recently because I got around to finally watching Prince of Darkness, John Carpenter's Prince of Darkness, the 1880s movie. And I know very little about that movie. So when Alice Cooper popped up in it as a homeless guy, I was like, ah, it's Alice Cooper. Brilliant. <laughs> Likewise, I knew Alice Cooper. I'd seen the movie before. Freddy's Dead, um, The Final Nightmare. I knew Alice Cooper yeah. played Freddy Krueger's father in that. But Lou didn't. My wife didn't. So when he popped up, he was like, oh, yeah, there's Alice Cooper again. Uh, I loved, I loved when Chester Bennington appears in Saw 3D and gets killed in Saw 3D. Love it. Love that. The Offspring in, the, in Idle Hands. Now, that's a little bit different because the Offspring are just playing themselves. But um, Dexter gets his, his scalp ripped off. So that's yeah. awesome. And uh, Henry Rollins in Wrong, Wrong Turn 2, Dead End, when I was doing that series, and I was like, okay, time for the sequel. And it was like starring Henry Rollins. I was like, oh, you mean, you mean, he's, you mean he's in it for like a minute? And I was like, no, it fucking stars Henry Rollins. And he's the <laughs> best thing about it as well. Awesome. Shit like that where you just go, oh, yeah, this is great cameos. Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely cool if you don't know about it as mm-hmm. well. Like if it just, you know, it's not like maybe mentioned in the, you know, all over the cover, like Alice Cooper's in this. Yes. You know, and then you just watch it. It's like, oh, shit. Mm-hmm. I remember um, watching... Um, the netflix program lock and key okay i don't know if you've seen that uh it's a little sci-fi kind of fantasy thing it's pretty cool and i was watching it and while we were watching it we thought oh this is quite stephen king but i knew it wasn't a stephen king thing you know i would have heard of it and then right at the end of the very last episode they get into this van and the guy that's driving the van as he opens up the door it looks identical to stephen king and you're like and we know that he loves to cameo oh, yeah, 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 yeah of course but he looks too young. So look it up. Of course, it's his son, Joe Hillstrom King. 
and it's Joe Hill's book or comics <laughs> that have been converted. Oh, what a connection! And it was like, like um, you know, that kind of passing of the baton in it. It's like I'm now watching King stuff, but this time it's his son, and he's still making dodgy cameos in it, and he looks exactly like his dad. It's like so we're gonna get another fifty years of this. <laughs> yeah, because King cameos, King cameos are uh, iffy as fuck when they do. Yeah. Pop up. <laughs> I mean, the only good thing about modern King cameos is that they do tend to be cameos, whereas like if you go back twenty years ago, he, he tended to try and give himself a, a slightly larger role in yes. in, a, in a fair few films, which wasn't always for the best. True. True. Okay. Cool. So, um, a nice simple one next, uh, and that is masks in general. Mm. Um, and just g generally the masks used in heavy metal that are often horror themed, you know, the kind of, I guess, to create shock and discomfort a lot of the time, despite what the bands often say, the point of the mask actually is, you yeah. know, generally it's to create uh, a bit of an uproar of the shock. So, you know, I'm talking about things like Mushroom Head, Slipknot, uh, Guar, The Infernal Sea, Slaughter to Prevail, you know, these bands that have taken what I see as a horror element, mm. you know, to create a character of themselves on the stage, which is more fitting of, often of a horror movie anyway, yeah. you know, and it kind of goes with the sound and everything like that. And like I said, I'm, you know, I don't really buy a lot of the reasons given for why they wear them, but I'm a fan of them uh, either way, you know. You yeah, I think it just gives, gives a little bit of horror edge to everything, doesn't it? Who did yeah, I miss? Yeah. Missed one band though, didn't you? Oh, I probably missed about a hundred, didn't I? No, you missed quite a prominent band that you could, you know, tie the whole horror element in while to their music as well, with masks and face paint. Ghost. Yeah, well, actually, do you know why I didn't do them? Because I did have them on my list and I took them off because I bought. Oh, they're not metal. <laughs> they're rock, rock and <laughs> yeah, metal. Yeah, no, but I, I stayed on the metal side. <laughs> I, I wasn't going to go, you know, Slipknot, Slaughter to Prevail, Guar, The Infernal Sea, Ghost. <laughs> I would have been very proud if you did, but there you go. No, yeah. I agree. In fact, like I was going to ask the question then, like you think about those bands that pay a relevancy towards masks and things like that. And was, is there one like a mask that for you has stood out of all these bands more than any other that you kind of think that one stuck in my head because it was either particularly brutal looking or it's just really memorable? Um, I, I've got some that stick out in my head for being sh like pretty shit, and I don't really understand the point of them. And that, that's you know, the that, what I said. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but th there's probably two in particular I think that really stand out for me. Out of like, you know, these these aren't really like fucking rare or anything like that, you know. But um, one of them is the Slipknot mask because it's one of the few masks that haven't changed over the years, and that's the kind of black leather gimp mask with all the needles coming oh, out of it oh, all yeah. the way around, and um. You know, while there were some iconic ones like Corey's initial mask, you know, with the dreadlocks and all that, yeah. that would have been iconic to me. But because they, most of the band changed their mask with each, you know, uh, new cycle, I guess, mm. is that what they call it? A new cycle. Yeah. You know, they changed the color of their boiler suits. But that mask seems to have st kind of stayed pretty much the same throughout, which I, has made it iconic yeah. to me. Uh, and also actually within the band Mushroom Head, uh, another one that's been pretty much around all the way from the beginning of it. And obviously that's a band that's changed quite a lot. Mm. Um, I don't really know the band members name, but essentially it has this kind of thing going on at the top that looks like kind of razor wire all over the place. But, um, you know, again, it's like a mushroom head in the past mushroom head, this most recent album, that mask is still there in there. And that's kind of thing. I think sometimes with the mask, it needs longevity, doesn't it? You know, you want to be seeing it over the course of 10, 15 years and you're like, oh, there's that mask. Yeah, yeah. I remember seeing that. Ch band changes the mask every two years. I don't know. It doesn't really have the same impact, does it? It doesn't, doesn't create a legacy. I agree. And it's interesting what of Slipknot because when I think of Slipknot, I think of the other mask that never really changes. And there is one more. And uh, it's Mix One. Oh, the guitarist. Yeah. yeah it's got that it's kind of metal. Yeah. Yeah. It's almost like a, a serial killer mask. Like a, yeah. thing, probably, like yeah. a bit like a hockey mask, kind that's of, it, but yeah. not without like the holes. Yeah. Yeah. That's a cool, that's a cool one. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. And that one's been around since, since as long as I can remember as well. So, so yeah. But yeah. There's your secret for bands wearing masks. Don't change them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Jeff. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, right, my next one's going to be an album specific. So I actually chose two albums overall that were purely, absolutely based on horror. And the first is Ice Nine Kills, Silver Scream. So this was an album that was released in, let me just check the date. 2018, end of 2018. They have done a remaster and added more stuff to it. But basically yeah. every track on it has uh, a theme or was inspired by a movie. So I'm going to quickly run them down. Cinematic inspiration for the tracks were Nightmare on Elm Street, Friday the 13th, Halloween, 
Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Saw, The Crow, <laughs> The Shining, The Devil's Rejects, Edward Scissorhands. Okay. Yeah, pushing that one. <laughs> yeah, they are pushing that one. Silent Night, Deadly Night, and American Werewolf in London. And the final cut bonus tracks that we saw later on were had a bonus track which was for Scream and then had a cover of Thriller by Michael Jackson as well as some acoustic stuff which featured the likes of Ari Lehman who was the original um, Jason and stuff like that. So yeah, Ice Nine, and when I think of an album that's horror themed, Ice Nine Kills is the one that jumps to mind. Yeah. Nah, this is a really fucking good album. Yeah, it is actually a good album. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it was actually, um, it was, well, because, because I knew what style of music they were, it was the first album of theirs that I ever listened to proper, mm-hmm. and I enjoyed it so much that not only did it make my list as well, <laughs> exactly, um, although I didn't list out all the tracks, I listed three or four of them, but I also rolled it in, and I, I then also went back one album and listened yeah. to their album previous to that. Oh, Okay which is called, let me just find the name of it, Every Trick in the Book. So, as you can probably imagine, with the silver screen being filmed, Every Trick in the Book was the exact same thing, but on their favourite horror books. Really? Yeah. I've got to go go look at this. It's really good as well, you know, and it's got, like, a lot of the stuff that you would, like, I guess you would probably typical to to kind of expect, you know, but Mm -hmm. alongside that, it's got got things like um, songs on Carrie, songs on Alive, songs on The Exorcist. You know, it's really good, really, really good. And um, it was that I, I kind of combined the two of them into one thing um, on mine. So it's just like Ice Nine Skill, sorry, Ice Nine Kills, really do kind of perfectly balance that horror and metal edge, don't they? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, they really do. They really do. They're like, um, for me, they're like the horror, the horror version of August Burns Red, Christmas side of things. You know, <laughs> Hall- Halloween, August Burns Red. <laughs> so, well, uh, yeah, so all I want is a, a run of shows where I see like Ice Nine Kills doing Halloween show themed, and yeah. then a, a month later, let's go August Burns Red and to do a Christmas stuff. You know, to, to cheer you up. <laughs> yes, yes. All right, I'm going to go for a video. Now I'm going to choose a really simple one, which is I'm uh, uh, looking through videos that kind of were either based around horror or, or were used in horror movies, but done. Like, because you know what that means? The band's playing and then they throw in clips. Mm, yeah. I wanted one that really stood out where it's like a story in itself. And it's an old one. It's Motorhead's Hellraiser, which was done for Hellraiser 3, Hell on Earth, and has Lemmy effectively playing a game with pinheads that he ends up losing. That to me was the most like, iconic one. I was like, oh shit. Yeah, that, that, that's what I, that, that really stood out. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. As a song, I mean, that song features Lemmy, Ozzy, and Zach Wilde on it. Yeah, so of course. three fucking titans, yes, you know, yes. of rock and metal there. Over time, man, certainly over time. It's aged fucking terribly, the video. Yeah, I bet it has. <laughs> All right, uh, I'm going to go for a video as well then. Um, and this is, I, I guess, a band I, I've grown to love more and more and more, even though I loved them when I was young, hate, didn't care for them in the middle, and then fell in love with them again recently, and that okay. is Mushroom Head. Oh. Uh, the song in particular, though, the video is actually not from the most recent album, um, A Wonderful Life. It's from the album before, The Righteous and the Butterfly, which, upon listening back, has you know 15 tracks on it, 13 I don't really get, <laughs> you know, but it's got a couple on there that I really like, and one of those is called We Are the Truth. Mm-hmm. Now, the video to this song is fantastic. So it, it kind of like, um, where am I? So Jackie LaPonza, the female who wasn't part of the band then, but was kind of like a cameo person. She's like the main sort of singer in it. Yeah. And they do uh, Evil Dead. I wouldn't say it's a parody because it's done with respect and yeah. with horror, you know, but it's essentially, you know, Mushroom Head in all their gore and masks and everything like that in and around the cabin in the woods. You've got Jackie LaPonza head coming out of the basement, you know, that sort of stuff. It's, um, it's a really, really wonderful take on Evil Dead. Like done really, really tastefully, you know, not not a piss take, but a nice nice. homage to to the horror side of it. That's nice. It's nice to see. It's not a piss take. It's far too easy because we get we get to bands that do that on the hate. There are a few. (laughs) Um, What have I got now? I've still got three more. Oh, I'm I'm doing my other movie then, and similar to Stage Fright. For some reason, I guess I'm super, super attracted to movies that are not like metal related, but are musicals, but feature a villain who leans towards the rock and metal pudding. And we're going to 1987 for Slumber Party Massacre 2. 
Now, for those who know, the original is a bit of a cult classic, but it's a very serious movie. And it's a slasher killer movie with a guy with a drill. So when, when like me, I did that movie, reviewed it, and was like, right, let me do the sequel. It's called to expect more of the same. And what I got was a musical and a comedy horror and a villain that is a rockabilly greaser that plays a guitar and has a drill attached to the end of, the, end of his guitar. And it was like, the fuck am I watching? This is a sequel to the other movie. But yes, it's that heavy metal villain. And he, like, he looks like he belongs in Greece because he's got the leather jacket, like the Fonz and all that. But he's got a big red like um, flying V guitar with a drill attached to the end. He sings rock and roll like as well when he's killing. It's, it's, must have, uh, must have got, played havoc with his, with his acoustics, having a drill on the end of your guitar. <laughs> it sounds great. It sounds great. <laughs> yeah, I feel I've got a bit of an attraction to these movies because that's two I chose of pretty much the yeah. same thing. <laughs> that's for our next, next list there, isn't it? Carl's <laughs> 10 favourite musicals. <laughs> yeah, man, that's some great ones. Yeah. Um, I'll do my, uh, my last film. Um, as well, what have I got left? I've got two left. Mm -hmm. Have I? Yeah. Okay. So this is um, probably an unpopular opinion, I would imagine. Um, and that is that, and I know it may be tainted by my love of the band, but mm -hmm. I'm actually quite a big fan of the low budget British horror movie, Cradle of Fear. Like I said, I know I may be tainted by my love of the band. <laughs> On our list. It's not this list. <laughs> <laughs> But I like it. It's, it's like, it, it is what it is. Do you know what I mean? It's not meant to be like a Hollywood blockbuster by any means whatsoever. It's done mm -hmm. on that. So I think I remember reading somewhere it was done on something like 150K. I think mean, Danny Phil yeah. said, said that's essentially the catering budget for most horror movies. Yeah. <laughs> or not most, sorry, but bigger budget movies. But yeah, and no, I'm a fan of it. And I guess, you know, the fact that it features Danny Filth and even the rest of the mid year of band members all make cameos in it at some point. Uh, it's kind of like an anthology thing that all gets tied together at the end with 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 the final episode kind of trying to make sense of it all yeah. doesn't always make sense i guess that's why i like it a little bit you know it's a bit it's a bit silly but it's also like bloody and you know gross and everything like that so uh, it's got a great soundtrack obviously uh plenty of cradle songs on it so there you go Featuring yeah, the a, band made for horror. I remember when I first heard of Cradle of Fear and I got so excited, I was so intrigued by the idea of anything with starring Danny Filth, uh, or at least having him in it because he's not actually a star, uh, but yeah. he's in it and other band members. At the time, I wouldn't have recognised who the fuck was who. I'd love to go, I'd probably go, go back and watch it, but I hated the movie. I hated it. I thought it was trash. Um, and for some reason, something always sticks out in my head about that series. I don't know what part of the story it is, and it's literally a, a momentary scene, and that is a guy's uh, nub of his leg where he's lost his leg, getting licked by a woman. <laughs> don't know why that that's brilliant. Back. That's <laughs> film, film gold. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you uh, should watch back at it now. I mean, now like you're like open-minded enough to watch horror musicals and come out of them loving it. You might find like a new appreciation in the silliness of Cradle of Fear. It needs a review for the site. It does need a review. It clearly oh, 10 out of 10, mate. <laughs> <laughs> right, got another album. And this is a more modern band, one of our very own from the shores of the UK. And this is a new one to me. And it came my way and the title and the description blew me away. Bear in mind, coming off the back of not really ever experienced an album that was based in horror. This band said, hey, not only is our album based in horror, but we, we basically, it's covers of tracks you know from horror movies, but not some of the obvious ones. And it is Lesbian Bed Death and the album Born to Die on VHS. Big 80s horror fans. So I'm going to run down the tracks. There are some original songs. So Fury, original song. Then we get Dream Warriors, which was originally performed by Dokken for Nightmare on Elm Street 3. Uh, you Can't Hide from the Beast, which is from Fright Night, done by Autograph. Scream Until You Like It, which was originally done by Wasp for Ghoulies 2. Pet Cemetery, which was originally done by the Ramones for Pet Cemetery. Hellraiser, the motorhead one from Hellraiser 3. Uh, Party Time, one of my favourite movie songs party time zombie version by 45 grave from the return of the living dead lost in the shadows from the lost boys covered by uh done originally by lou graham he's back by alice cooper the man behind the mask from friday the 13th part six jason lives and uh, the last power of the night johnny Steele from critters now if you know critters and you know, you know Power of the Night. And that's fucking hilarious that they did that. Then you get Flesh and Born to Die in VHS original tracks. And a bonus track called Heartbreaker, which is a cover of Heartbreaker. It's a brilliant album. It's a lot of fun. And the covers are fucking excellent. Excellent covers. Yeah. 
There you go. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of um, oddities in terms of the films <laughs> <laughs> there. <clears throat> like you said, not the obvious ones. No. Okay, so this is my last one. Uh, and I have gone for a band uh-huh. in particular, and this band is Guar. Uh, okay. So, obviously, sci-fi horror, I guess, at best. Horror, gross, yep. gross out stuff. You know, looking like fantastic 70s B-movie horror creatures and a little bit like the Power Ranger bad guys. Yeah, you know? yeah. <clears throat> but, you know, the stage show couples with all the gore, fake blood and other bodily fluids. You know, they've had this story they've sort of tried to stick to for three decades without ever really breaking mm. character. You know, the idea that they're barbaric interplanetary warriors here on Earth, you know. Uh, but also underneath the silliness, the gore, the makeup, the costumes and all that, they're also an extremely talented band. You know, yes. the most recent release, Blood of Gods, is absolutely brilliant. Um, although still not up there with my favourite, which is like about 10 years ago, which is We Kill Everything. So, you know, they're an, an absolutely mentally brilliantly talented band. And they came up with this concept 30 years ago. Um, it's been a rotating, a revolving door of band members. You know, mm. there are no original band members in that band, but everybody who gets into it, buys into it, gets involved in the silliness and, and keeps the whole choir thing going. I think that's brilliant. True. They certainly have never brought kayfabe, man, for real. Yeah. My last one then, and it's not really horror related, but when I was thinking of like, uh, what's the most horror video you can think of? When I was looking like for Hellraiser and things like that, one thing jumped in my head and I was like, that's not horror. And I was like, yeah, we all know it's horrible. And it's probably the most horror video you'll ever watch in a non-horror obvious way. And it is Metallica's one. If you want a video that is just <laughs> fuck that, I never yeah. want to see that movie ever. And I never I want thought, to see that video again. I thought you was going to go full like off tangent there and do something like, like a Virgin by Madonna or something like that. Oh no, I, I love Like a Virgin. It's a great song. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Metallica's one. You know the video. You know how utterly bleak and downcast and just horrible that video is. The the, the movie Johnny gets his gun. Johnny gets his Johnny gun. Get is your that gun. It? Yeah. Johnny get your gun. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's just like fuck that. That's, yeah. That's horror. Yeah. The horrors yeah, of war. It's the bleakest video you can ever really watch. And one of the best videos ever made, yes, I believe, if you were, uh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> according to us, yes. but also according to a lot of people, I think. Consensus. <laughs> there you go. There's our 10 things we love about horror and heavy metal and rock. Of course, we will have 10 things we hate. Make sure you check that out and let us know your thoughts in the comments. Thank you very much for watching. You can check us out on GBHBell.com as well as on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter and Tumblr. Go to Patreon to help us out over there, that's patreon.com forward slash GBHBL, as well as Big Cartel, where you can find some of our merchandise. We have a podcast running on SoundCloud and Apple Podcasts, and of course, if you like this video, do us a favour, hit the subscribe button and help the channel grow. Games, horror and heavy metal, what else is life for?